Ah, first position, the most common endgame situation in the game of checkers, hence the name, first position. This is an endgame situation that all players should know because of how common and how popular it can actually arrive in games. Many times, expert level players will angle for this endgame very early on in the game. So what is first position exactly? Well, first position involves having two kings and your opponent having a king as well as a single piece in their own single corner. Now, this piece can be on this square, this square, really any of these single corner squares right here. If it's on this square or this square, the game will only be a draw because the piece can advance toward its right side of the board and it is a draw game. So, but I think even taking a piece off and just visualizing this end game as the same sort of situation that you would in a regular two versus one. The objective is to flush the king out of the double corner and then trap it. The same goes if a piece is in the single corner. So I'm going to walk through this in full, talk about some defenses that offer the most resistance, but this is a winning position for red. But before I get into first position, I want to talk about a opening that was featured in my recent live stream, this line in the single corner. And I'm going to talk through this really briefly, and then we'll get into first position in more detail. Really quickly, before we get into first position, I want to talk about a line of play that was discussed in my recent live stream, and that's this single corner line. And I'm going to play it out really quickly. So you have 11 15, 22 18, of course, forming the single corner opening. 8 11, 29 25, 4 8, 24 20. Again, all very standard play from here. And then this 12 16 move. Now, Typical published play will give 26-22 as the main line of play. 25-22 can also be played. But instead, the line that was brought up, and this was brought up by Gary from the live stream, talked about this 18-15 gambit line. So, of course, red has to jump 10-19. It cannot jump 11-18 to because you have the 2-for-1 here with this elbow in play. So after the 10-19 jump, we discussed... 27-24 as a great way to press this piece. And then after 7-10, jumping back. And then I thought here maybe maybe 32-27. I also liked delaying it with 25-22. Fortunately, we had someone watching the live stream named Brian H. Brian is a fantastic checkers analyst for many years. He's a great problemist as well. And what he did was he actually escalated this play to the American Checker Federation bulletin editor along with the games editor and asked for more information about this position. And that person's name is Jim Loy. So Jim Loy got back to Brian, who then got back to me, showing a line of play, this line of play, in Duffy's single corner. I'm going to show you the book here. Duffy's single corner is a phenomenal guide, really, for anything single corner. This is the go-to book. It's a tremendous resource. And he pointed to a line in here, and I looked it up, and this is the play it gives. It says, and I'll actually show you, hopefully you'll be able to read it, but it actually says 1815 loses. You can see note B, and then it gives that line of play. And I want to say first and foremost, this is one of the criticisms of checkers. You have many of these old books, and again, I, I'm a huge fan of this book, but many of these old books just give line of play and say either a position is good, bad, winning, or losing, and nothing else beside that. You don't get the why behind the moves. There isn't any other continued variation from it. So that's why someday I think... Either one of the viewers or myself or Alex actually kind of walk through this and play it out in full. And then we can add more to that note B. We can actually give the proper and best moves to reply. But for 
all intents and purposes, this is a winning position for red. So what I'd say is if you can prove otherwise, please let us know. So I wanted to highlight this really briefly for you. Now let's get back into first position. So let's get started with some full comprehensive analysis of first position. I'm going to talk through several variations here. So I think it's important to really take your time through this, play this out on your own board. In the end game especially, repetition is so very important. So really taking your time through this, soaking in the different themes and ideas, is really going to help you going forward in these end game videos. So here we go. As I mentioned, the winning side has two kings, and the losing side, white, has one king in the double corner and one single piece in its own single corner. Now, one thing I want to note, if it is white to move, it's actually a draw. White will have the opposition. So if it's white to move, white can just move back into the, into the double corner, and red cannot make any inroads. If red tries to flush it out, white is going to go here, and now red cannot back the piece because you have this pitch here, it's no good. So really, red doesn't have much of anything to do here. It's really just a seesaw game. So that's one thing important to note. But with red to move, it is a win. And again, I'm going to go through all of these variations, starting with the most challenging one first. So here we go. Now again, red is going to want to flush out the white king, and it does so as follows. Again, only one move to make here for the white king. And now red can backstop it. The white king is going to move back, and now red can begin to flush it out. If white goes here next, red cannot back it because you have this exchange here, and the game is only a draw. So the key move to win in this formation is red going here. Now I'm going to show a number of variations at this point as well, but the most resistance way for white to defend is actually simply by going back into the double corner. And now red is going to move here. Again, it wants to keep this piece in the double corner. The white king is going to move out. And now red can press it. And white is just going to go back. Red is going to move into this square, forcing this piece out. Because if white goes into this square or this square, the red king is just going to trap it by moving here next. So now, the single piece can start advancing. And it's best for red to move back, now pressing this piece. White is going to go here, and now red is going to move back into this square. White is going to go back into the double corner next, and the best move now, this is the key move to winning, it's a bit unnatural, but actually to press behind, forcing again onto this square here for white. And now red is going to go out of the double corner, again trapping this piece, forcing this move right here back into the double corner. And now red is going to go into this square. And from here, really, there's not many options white can do. If the white king just goes back here, this king is going to press this piece. Same is if the white piece goes here, they're just going to be pressing. And same here, you're just going to press. So again, limited to only one move. 
and now the press is successful because this piece is trapped so if it goes here here then it's back to a two-on-one basic ending so that's one comprehensive analysis let's go over some more variations all right let's talk about another variation and what I'm going to do which will hopefully save you some time is I'm going to put timestamps in every single new variation that I cover here so you'll be able to quickly go to those if you want to study a particular variation within first position so let's talk about this one now so again red to move and win so again the red kings are just going to flush out this white king And then again, this key move here, because moving here will just allow the exchange. So moving here. Now I show it in the first variation, backing into the double corner. Let's talk about moving this single piece out first. So the key to winning this is the red king moving to this square. And now if the white king moves back here, we actually end up in that same variation that we played previously. So Instead, maybe white will go here. And now again, the king cannot go here because of the exchange, so the king moves, must move on to this square. If the white king now goes back into the double corner, you have this right here. And now if the white king goes here, you just have this, and now it's completely trapped. So instead, that will not work. So the white king must move here. The key to winning in this variation is for the red king to move into this square. And now if the single piece tries to advance, red has this exchange here, and then the white king will be trapped. So instead, the white king must retreat back toward its own single corner. Red is going to go here, and the white king is going to continue to retreat. Red is going to continue to follow it. Now, if it tries to go back toward its own double corner, like this, then the king will just trap it. And now the red king is going to start to move out from the double corner because this single piece is trapped by this king. So white is now just biding its own time. And again, it can now, no longer go into this route because this king can follow as this king is now trapping this single piece. So again, it's just going to offer more resistance here. This king is going to continue to move out, and now, as you can see here, the white king will ultimately be trapped no matter what. So that is yet another variation. Let's talk about some more. All right, for a third variation, again, same concept. The key move here. Now, if the white king retreats this way, red is going to move here. And if it tries to retreat this way, this red king is going to follow up. Again, forcing and limiting the mobility. So going back into this square moving here. So again, envisioning that if this piece were not even here, it'd be a win anyways. So now forcing this piece here, and then simply going into this square, trapping all of the pieces. So similarly, let's bring up the position again. So again, flushing out the white king. Now, instead of going into this square, maybe it goes into this square, and the way to win is by moving the king out of the double corner. Again, forcing this piece here. And if white goes into this square, then you have this same win. 
from a previous variation. It goes here. And now again, as I mentioned before, if the white piece tries to advance to get a king, then you have this pitch. And if it goes here instead, then you have this. And again, it's that same ending that we talked about before. So with these two pieces, no matter how the white king tries to gain some resistance, it results in the same loss. So let's talk about some more variations. This next variation is a little bit more challenging, so let's talk it through. Again, the kings are just going to flush out this king. Key move here. Going back into the double corner. Moving back here, and then out of the double corner again. Now I talked about, after the red king moves here, this in the first variation. But what if the white king moves into this square? What red does is it will trap the king and force movement here. Now, red cannot move here because of the exchange out and it's just a draw. So what red must do is move here. Again, forcing the piece here because if the king tries to move out, you have the double jump. So advancing here. Now again, the key move next is to press this piece. If the king tries to back it, red has the exchange here. So the white piece must advance. If it goes this route, then red can press again and force this move here. Now you have the two for one. So instead, white must advance here. Now, again, the key move is moving your king into this square, forcing the white piece to advance. Red going back into the double corner, forcing white to get a king. And now, moving into this square again forcing the king to move out, and you still have that two for one, and the win. All right, this next variation is going to show the single corner piece advancing early. So again, red looking to flush out the king. Now, if the piece advances now, then red can just go here. And if the king is moved, then red is just going to go here. And if the piece goes here instead, then the red king is going to go back into the double corner, trapping all of the pieces. So that's one variation. The other, again, same concept. But if the white piece moves now, the key to win is red to go back out. And if the piece goes here, red can go back in. And then again, if the king goes here, you have this trap. And if the piece goes here, just move your other king out of the way for the win. So there you have it. Some comprehensive analysis of first position. And I get it. It can be a little dry. End game studies are not always the most fun. They aren't very flashy, so it can be difficult to grab your attention, but I think it is still very important to know, and hopefully when watching this video, you can play out all of these variations so that you, in turn, can ultimately become a better end game player. Thanks, as always, for watching.